I've got this is a celery that overwintered, just going to let it flower. A lot of the little insects absolutely love the, the delicate celery flowers. Um, and it's, a, it's an exciting time because of strawberries. So I'm going to do a nice little strawberry harvest. And I, I think the way of opening this up is that I've got a bit of sad news at the moment. Um, based around the other garden. So a lot of you know it's been an incredibly dry start to the season. And this garden here, we're fortunate enough, even though we're not on Maine's water, we're fortunate enough to have a pond. And that pond has a lot of water and it's uh, shaded. So it's essentially our storage tanks. Now, the other garden, it's again, no access to Maine's, but there is no pond that we can use that we can pump from. All of the streams have dried out. Um, all of the tanks in a sense have dried out. There's only like one tank left, which is essentially just for some of the seedlings. And so what that's meant is for a lot of the things that I've transplanted and a lot of things that I've, I've sown there, there's, there's no water to keep them going. Well, at least I've got a lot of nice strawberries to enjoy. Um, but yeah, essentially it's a case of um, that garden's out of water and there's really n nothing I can do about it unless I take massive canisters of water. But because it is so dry and it's also had around a third less of the rain that we've had here. We've had over the last week or so, I I'd say about an inch, but there's only been a third of that at the other garden. And so, so even if I'm going to be watering a load of things, the, the ground is just so dry that you gotta give a really, really nice amount of water for it to make a difference. And so what I have done there is in terms of the polycrub, that's okay. That's kind of what I'm using the only stored water for, for all of the tomatoes in there. Put a mulch of grass down and it's making a, a nice big difference there. So that's one thing, but to be honest, I'm, I'm really quite worried about that garden and what's happening in the future because I can't, I can't make it there as often. Um, so now the question is, what, what things am, am I gonna implement uh, for next year so I don't end up in the same position because it's not much fun at the moment. So after say um, 2018, last year, this year, uh, it's a hot day today. I, I'm, I don't exactly do well in the heat. Um, so try and come to the garden when it's a little bit late in the night or do an early morning stint. And this is just like a reminder coming here in the midday that it's uh, there's a lot of these days uh, recently. So 2018, last year, this year, really dry years. And it's definitely making me rethink about how I prioritize stuff in the garden, such as my taking on too many annuals, especially in the, in the other garden where, you know, I prefer annuals to a lot of things. Obviously you've got beautiful perennials like this, this mint, I absolutely adore mint. There's so many perennials that I like, rhubarb, juice, tomato, chokes, ochre. Um, but even those to a degree, they, they also need water. Um, they're just a little bit more resilient. So do I cut down the amount of annuals that I grow uh, next year? Um, but then annuals are what I really enjoy eating and really enjoy um, their, their flavour. So I think it's, it's a case of, and this might be something on your mind, is, is it actually worth sacrificing a bit more growing space to put in more water storage? Um, that's certainly a question that I'm thinking about, as well as setting more kind of permanent irrigation systems, like setting up soaker hoses. So even for beds outside, I can plant them up, set up a soaker hose. So it's just gonna be a lot more easier watering because I think the hardest part is more of the timing. If it was say we had a really nice kind of normal season up until now, and then, the and then it suddenly became really warm from this point onwards you know past summer solstice and then we had like two months of just dry dry weather i don't think it would have made anywhere near as a negative impact compared to march onwards because plants are trying to develop they need all of that water to develop and to grow um, and the water just hasn't been there so a lot of the things are just looking lackluster because they haven't had that moisture no matter you know even with watering by hand so Essentially what that spiel kind of boils down to is that 
the time that we needed the most water, we've had the least amount of water, which just to me doesn't make sense at all, um, which is why it's been such a challenge. And I just, anyone who's new to gardening and has come into it, I, I don't envy them. It's, it's um, I really feel for you guys, it shouldn't be this case. But I think out of it, yes, it, I can feel quite emotional about it. Um, I think just something I'm going to be scratch, no pun intended, scratching my head a lot is if it's the same again next year, what can we do to just bring a little bit more hope and a little less stress when it comes to not having enough water? So yeah, there's a lot to think about and I think it's so important. Any th thoughts um, or suggestions that you have, let's turn the comment section of this video in just, into just like a load of ideas, the things to prioritize. What are the annuals out there that we can grow that don't require as much water? Or is it maybe worth starting things a little bit earlier, being a little bit more risky with, yes, there's a potential of a frost, but if we can have ground cover with crops growing, we're gonna lose, um, we're gonna save a lot more water from evaporating. The other thing that's really important to note about when you have just a lot of dry weather and the plants aren't particularly happy is that you're gonna um, what ends up happening is uh, I've noticed this year often there's a greater pressure of pests because um, the plants are weaker they're not being able to bring up their minerals that they want um, that pests and diseases naturally target weaker plants and I think that's a side effect of when you have kind of quite a challenging period of time during the year, i.e. the key part of the growing season not having enough moisture, the knock-on effect is that I think we're going to experience, especially towards the tail end of the season, um, with stress plants, or maybe even from now, that there's going to be more pests and disease pressures to build. So that is kind of my um, a hypothesis in a sense, but it's something that I am um, kind of just keeping an eye on and making sure that I can stay on top of things and the things that do mean a lot to me um, in terms of the crops that I just prioritize making sure that they're as healthy as possible and having to end up being quite selective which is you know it's a good exercise and when you are selective you can then start to think of next year okay um, do I really need to grow this next year maybe I could be um, a little bit more uh, thoughtful about the things that I grow not just in terms of what is most important to you but also the things that can ride the season you know we still got loads of peas <laughs> that was one of my goals this year to grow an excessive amount of peas you might have remembered that from a previous video but i want to send you an invite i want to turn the comment section of this video into a resource so i'll get things kicked off with a few comments and just sharing thoughts down below i'd love to hear about your climate maybe it's been much, much drier than usual. Maybe you're used to it actually being really hot, but suddenly it's been really, really wet. And some of the things that you feel you've done or some thoughts that might help mitigate that, especially if you're a new gardener as well, just put things down below. I think the comment section of this video could turn out really, really interesting. Just use it as a community forum in a sense, so we can just be as open and as helpful as possible. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and share a list of crops that I feel grow or have grown really, really well in this much drier season, just as like a good starting point for next year to make sure that we're thinking about that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Let's turn this kind of slightly challenging start of the growing season into something positive. So I'll see you down below. I'll be nice and active.